Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Anime Night in the Dojo. Today's featured show, The Ancient Magus Bride, Season 2. Uh, yep, Ancient Magus Bride, Season 2, Episode 14. Welcome back to the Dojo. I'm Ryu. Sage, we're back from our Anime Night in the Dojo, and well, did you guys know Chise was really strong? You guys know that? If you uh, missed, like, uh, 20-something episodes, you might have missed that. So uh, you might want to go back and watch them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, she almost unleashed the dragon uh, last week and was stopped, also miraculously, by someone who is also apparently very strong. So there's uh, there's some interesting stuff going on here. <laughs> we got malicious compliance teaching. We've got Isaac fighting, even though he's just a guy who wants to make weapons. You know. <laughs> um. Uh. <laughs> Elias realizing he has multiple friends, apparently, and having to make the face. Uh, it's good. It, it's all over the place. Veronica is still apparently suspect. Uh, we got artificial fairies. We got uh, actual fairies being locked out and are angry. <laughs> so there's all kinds of stuff going on with this show. And it's great. So um, I, I guess we're going to be starting in a snowscape in the first frame of the episode. Thankfully, it's not random guy crotch. Glad we're past <laughs> Oh, to clarify, by the way, uh, apparently that Ariel, the fairies, uh, she's not, she doesn't actually have an official name. Jade is apparently just the, like, fan name for her that the community's given her because she's never been given an official name in the source material. Didn't uh didn't Philomilla call her by oh it's like the fairy fairy not like Philomilla's familiar yeah no the fairy that was looking for Chise the Ariel the uh the artificial fairy made for the Sargants was uh, Alcyone pretty much everything we talked about last week is on the table for the rest of the season so don't really need to say that again we just got to kind of see where uh, these first few episodes of this core take us and we're uh, where we'll be going but you know the uh the stuff going on at the school is the predominant thing uh we speculate on the stuff with the back doors could be a thing based on the intro uh the op and the eds there's probably going to be more stuff with the lichen throat people um i want to see more of fabio because he, he's funny to me <laughs> <laughs> so uh we have the new witch person uh, whether they're a witch or a, uh, just an associate or whatever their deal is, uh, that guy is now a thing. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, we still don't know what's up with that, if there's, like, actually male witches or not, because we've really only seen Mariel and the head witch. And while witch is generally a female term, there are plenty of fantasy situations where witches can be male. So, anyway... Let's just uh, go ahead, push some buttons, and uh, be glad we're not actually in this blizzard for real. So, uh, here goes some. You're not allowed to do that shot. Luffy already did that shot for Gear 5 earlier this year. Can't do that. He had a monopoly on that. <laughs> Whoa, okay, what the hell has gotten into you? Nothing. It's just that... I heard someone's heart breaking. Yeah, she most likely was that kid. She just didn't do any of the killing. Yeah. Good morning. You're late. And I'm torn up about it, but what does that help? Are you ready to begin our Literally nothing. this grim grimoire? <laughs> An alchemist selling their spell book is akin to them selling their soul. I assumed they needed the money that badly. So you bought the book for that, or they didn't know what they had. No, and I'm glad I didn't because it would have been a huge waste if I had. It didn't have anything useful to what I was trying to do. Well, well, hmm. well. What brings such a lovely witch into my humble shop? What are you buying? You brought the werewolf with you. <laughs> Excuse me, but I'm also a witch. Thank you. We're looking for a suspicious someone with a suspicious book. Tracking bees, huh? Okay. I'm a 
must have read it a million times, and I still have no idea what it says. Let me see. It was something about Socrates. <laughs> oh, in English. This one. Sorry. Socrates? It didn't make any sense of it either, so I skipped it for now. You should have the answers. They were included in another handout. What? Rion, um, do you like Philomela? <laughs> You go out of your way to be a jerk to her. I thought it might be the teenage version of pulling a girl's pigtails on the playground or something. I already know who the one for me is. And it definitely isn't Philomela. I just find it frustrating when people don't know their own self-worth. So much you? that you snapped a pen. What do you mean? <laughs> You're awfully eager to stick up for her. What do you think? Ow! Is that really necessary? Stop it, you idiot! Get off of me! 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 Get there's a lot of times where you, you get situations like this where you're just like, well, they're sealed off and they could potentially be sealed off for months in any given situation. It doesn't have to be this show, it could be any show, whatever. But a lot of times they don't do simple little things like this, which is, yes, they have to start growing their own food because they have no trade network. <laughs> yeah. So little things like this, I think, are important and just nice for keeping that sense of realism. So I got to appreciate that stuff. Um, as for the rest of the episode, well, Sir Gaunt more or less got confirmed that they're the ones who probably orchestrated the Webster tragedy based on strong arming slash blackmailing the lycanthropes into doing their dirty work for them because they had their kids, which is a dick move. Everything really is pointing towards the Sergeants at this point, though, once again, it still isn't hard confirmed yet. We have Philomela was there, and now we have the werewolves were at one point captured by the Sergeants, which all points towards the Sergeants being responsible, but we still don't 100% know for sure it was them, because there's still the possibility that they broke out of out of the Sergon's hold and then were hired by someone to attack the Websters and the Philomela was just there spying on them. Right. But everything that was painted in this sequence uh definitely makes it seem that way. So um yeah, that's just one yeah, of those it's things. most likely it, everything is pointing towards it being the Sergon's, which means it either most likely was the Sergon's or it's a deliberate subversion by the author to make it seem like the Sergeants when it wasn't actually. Right. But I mean, at this point, everything we've gotten on uh, the grandmother, she is, she's got, she has to have a legitimate reason why she treats Philomela the way she does and then why she's keeping her away from her parents. Because we got, I don't know if we got that before today. I don't remember exactly, but we got that today yeah. where um, in that pre-recorded message that was triggered by a literal flag. <laughs> That's what you call a flag. <laughs> uh, it's like, oh, uh, yes. A, what did she call it? Like a, a like a specific sequence of words was detected. Ergo, uh, oh, well, here's a pre-built in warning. Like, hey. <laughs> It, it, it's kind of like a, one of those fail safes uh, if, she, if she's not in direct contact with the familiar um, then she probably has a bunch of set phrases that if the familiar hears set phrases here's a threatening letter from grandma <laughs> which is pretty damn savage mind you but still nonetheless it, it leads to this which there's still a bunch of backstory on her that we need to get because we did get a little bit of backstory of her and uh, Rion as kids this episode, and she looked just like a normal, average, happy young girl. Not somebody who has been, like, ground down into becoming, like, 
an assassin for hire, or not for hire, but just like the dog of the Sargant family that has to go around and do things, uh, just the way she clearly has been since potentially the Webster in, thing. In general, it it feels like it's kind of a bastard child situation. Similar to, you know, like, Udayu. Uh, where, like, one of the parents uh, married out of the family, or the more likely thing... Like, that's a lot of it feels like that, but I think the more likely thing is probably going to be a case of assuming the Sargants are responsible for the Webster tragedy. It probably was a case of the grandmother sent Philomela to do the job, but she failed to do the job, so they sent the werewolves in as a contingency, and that just kind of turned into the inciting incident of the grandmother's, no, you're worthless, you never actually do anything correctly. Right. Yeah, it's just one of those things where if if that's how it was from the beginning, you would think then she wouldn't have any kind of reasonably happy memories, even if it was from Rion's side. Uh, so um, that probably makes sense based on just that was like her first job and she screwed it up. Ergo, now she's now we've gotten to here. For whatever reason. There's still been, uh, plenty of holes to be filled in that story, but uh, based on even if it's just like, say, Rion's memory, she looked nothing like this, obviously, in the like uh, mm -hmm. happiness department. So that'll be a uh, that's just one of those things that we're going to have to fill in the holes based on potentially their relationships with some of the other families like uh, Veronica's family, whose family name I'm derping on at the moment. Um, because she still seems like she has something to do with it and she knows Philomelia from when they were younger. So... Well, yeah, it's because their families are interconnected. It's, uh, Veronica's family was the Rickenbackers, who are like the big noble family, and the Sergants are the... Well, they're a noble family as well. They're the shady family that works under the Rickenbackers. Right. So, like, the thing with Philomela is ever since Philomela was born, she has been basically Veronica's servant. There, There's still plenty of the, like, major, uh, we'll just call them, like, the great houses of this show, uh, their inner workings, like what Isaac was talking about as well this episode a little bit that we don't know a huge amount about. But all these great alchemical families are a big deal, have their unique relationships mm -hmm. that we haven't really gotten to dive into yet um because we're getting sidetracked by some random nonsense of a book that is apparently still inside the college real bummer <laughs> yeah i figured that was gonna be the case when they forget and when the headmistress was all like yeah we sealed the school off and the tax conveniently stopped so it's probably outside the school so we're gonna send the witches off to go find it it's like yeah or uh the person with the book isn't stupid and saw that you closed the school off and therefore stopped attacking people long enough for you to think it was outside the school and start expending resources. Yep. Which, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't think I've seen tracking bees before, so that was cool, but this guy absolutely reminds me of the freaking uh, Shady Merchant from Resident Evil series. <laughs> The first thing he reminded me of was freaking uh, Ash and I from the first season, but it's definitely not him. Yeah. But Some other probably, guy. Probably of the same race that Ash and I is, because we never really got confirmed what he is. He was just like one of the others that was like, he's just another one of the, like the mystical beings that doesn't really fall under like fairy or anything like that. Right. Uh, apparently this guy... Uh... He likes coins. He really likes them, apparently. So, Which, sure. from what I remember correctly, <laughs> it's also kind of similar to Ash and I, because Ash and I, well, Ash and I didn't really like coins specifically. He was all about, like, collecting magical items and stuff like that. Right. Like he Trades was the one of some gave, kind. Yeah, he, he was the one who gave Chise the, uh, the fox pelt that allows her to shapeshift. Yep. 
So yeah, the, this guy had kind of like an interesting power set. He has the bees, and then he's he was able to reach into her mind and ascertain the information without much ado, I guess, even though it looked like a fairly uncomfortable experience for her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she had to have, she had to have known what she was getting into because she's the one that opened the damn door. <laughs> so yeah. Um we got uh, a little bit more on this guy, who apparently is centuries old, is not not a werewolf. Okay. Um he specifically said he is not to the uh, the merchant. No, he just said that he was also a witch. Mm -hmm. I don't remember him actually counteracting the werewolf statement. He just clarified that he was also a witch, mm -hmm. which does confirm that there are male witches. Right. I thought he did say, I don't know, I have to go check that. Um, but uh, yes, he did clarify that at very least he is a witch. Uh, I could have sworn he said he wasn't a werewolf, but whatever. Um, so this guy is centuries old, can shape shift, potentially because he's a werewolf or not, whatever. He is a witch, but he also seems to have a very unique empathic just trait to him because he was able to just discern that like mournful howl of the female lycanthrope and he immediately like broke out in tears so clearly he has got something going on there um for uh just one of his let's just call it traits or abilities so uh, that's something to look at going forward but uh yeah we got some just interesting just magical stuff this episode them being able to pass information in various ways whether it's reaching into a mind or sharing apparently a real shitty kiss, uh, <laughs> trading information one way or another, and this has been uh, pretty interesting. So <laughs> that's just one of those things that uh, warrants mentioning. Uh, speaking of information, um, apparently alchemists aren't supposed to trust each other because uh, you can't even take a sip of water because somebody could have messed with it. So uh, that was another one of those things where... Um, <laughs> Chise being sort of ignorant of the alchemist culture and just handing Philomea that uh, whatever that was like lavender uh, in the first core there. Um, perfume pouch. Yeah, was um, probably not the best plan based on the culture, but uh, as she pointed out, she knows that Philomea used it. Um, so she kind of went against the alchemist code by accepting and using a quote gift in this case. But I guess Chise would be a little bit different because she's not an alchemist, but still yeah, she's, she's, a, she's supposed she's to be wary of anybody in this, this case. So yeah, from what Lucy was saying, that mostly pertains to like alchemist to alchemist interactions, but Chise is a mage, but also you'd think that because alchemists and mages all have been at odds with each other for so long that, if anything, you should be more wary of what a mage gives you. Yep. So, uh, just uh, interesting little interactions like that. Um, we got more of the golems, uh, what their deal is. Uh, Rion basically knows them pretty much being everywhere, but I'm pretty sure we saw the golems on pretty much every section of the school that was shown off last episode. So maybe they're just like further driving home the point that the golems are pretty much patrolling everywhere now. And not just like Man. whatever areas. Well, so, what we saw of them last night was they were just patrolling. Not last night, but uh, last episode was that they were just patrolling last night. But now it seems they're patrolling everywhere, even during the day. Yep. But yeah. Um, the, uh, the, the, the classic, the, uh, me bring up the, that Konosuba quote, which I, I do have lying around, so we might have to throw it up. You can do it. Go ahead. What's up? Two dudes fighting over some chick. That, that quote right there. It just, it was perfect for this situation. It's like, oh, do you, do you like Phil Miller or something? It's like, no. It's like, well... Those childhood flashbacks say otherwise, and we already know that Isaac clearly has something 
uh, for her because he was quick to defend her multiple times and was the one to, you know, drag her away from poten potential danger there at the end of the first core. Like, no, we're leaving. Let's go. And he just, mm -hmm. like, took her hand and took off. So, uh... <laughs> uh yeah, this scene also had uh, Zoe continuing to reveal uh, a bit of his ignorance of alchemist ways himself. Being a... Uh, foreigner and a half breed and all that right and the, his whole thing of like oh well, you, you two grew up with each other and we're friends and stuff like that but we, we know that's was not the case like they knew each other as kids but there was no way they were allowed to actually really interact when they were kids with the fact that freaking rion is a noble and isaac is not right yeah, and then whatever uh, the deal is with, like, Rion himself, like, his uh, rust scent. So, we still have to get back to that yeah, at know. some point. So, yeah, well, We know Rion's family is apparently one of the other big deals, similar to the Rickenbackers of the noble families. And that he is apparently not necessarily the golden child, but he is someone that they put a lot of time and effort into. Right. And I believe he was the one that just wants nothing to do with them and just wants to bail. Mm -hmm. I believe it's him yeah, and the St. George's that like just kind of want to bail on everything and just be free. <laughs> yeah, both Rion and the St. George's are, are very disillusioned with their families and Rion wants to basically just truck off into the wilderness and become a mage, but he can't because of his aforementioned uh, affinity towards Rust. Right. Which does not go well with Faye. Yep. Meanwhile, meanwhile, the St. George's aren't fully convinced that they want to abscond off into the wilderness, but they technically have the option to because they do actually have affinity as mages. Yep. So uh, a lot of moving parts in this one as well. Um, I'm enjoying it so far. Um, it'll be interesting to see if uh, now that they've kind of set the precedent, if uh, Philomia triggers like another pre-recorded message because that was creepy. Um, <laughs> it could just be a one-off, obviously. Um, but just as like a precedent that um, that familiar has been instilled with like pre she, since she was instilled with a pre-recorded message, who is to say that she can't be instilled with a pre-recorded action sequence let's say like oh x event occurs now you have to do this kind of thing yeah there's more going on with Elsiani, i believe that most people are giving her precedent for like the headmistress and whatnot she's not just a babysitter she, she... The grandmother, I can almost guarantee, has more stuff in there. But I wouldn't be surprised if uh, her father or mother, I'm pretty sure it was her father, who built El Cyane, also probably has something in there as well. Right. Just as, like, a super, like, buried deep failsafe to, uh, like, set her free or something. Because uh, if she's separated from her parents, then clearly there's something going on with them in general. Mm -hmm. But yeah, um, looking forward to just seeing how this continues. Um, pretty much in talked general, out everything that's going on at the moment, so just kind of got to well, wait and see. Two more things, really. In general, I think Elsiany just does have more stuff going on with her still. <laughs> Like, she definitely seems to actually have some level of a mind of her own, even though she kind of hides it. Yep. Take the wave, uh, for example. Yeah. Um, like, I de it definitely feels like she was... What it, what it feels like is, once again, still going on the likelihood that it was Philomel's father who built her. It feels like the grandmother made him make her, but he uh, took creative liberties and like potentially gave her some actual sentience, but she's just basically learned to hide it from the grandmother. Yeah. 
So, you know, going forward, that's something to look at as well. Uh, if she shows any signs of uh, of that kind of deal, um, it just really depends on um, why she's been separated from her parents and uh, how, say, big of a, a, say, a talented creator her father is. That kind of deal. Like, we, we know from nothing about her father other than he exists and he created her, so... Well, we think he created her. Yeah, we think. All we know, all we know is that Alcyone mentioned that like very few alchemists have the ability to create uh, an artificial fay like her, and then she had that like brief memory flashback of someone of a what looked like a guy with gray hair, right? So presumably Philomela's father. Yeah, we're just assuming that at this point, but probably. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so and, he, he has to be at least something of a rare talent if he was even able to create her in the first place. Yeah, because from what we've known of this universe in general, uh, homunculus is one thing. Artificial fairy is something completely different and I assume is pretty unique. So, I, I know Elias didn't really say anything about her, but, uh, we haven't really gotten Elias a lot since she showed up. Yeah, Elias hasn't really interacted with her much. It's basically just she showed up and then he's been off dealing with uh, Simon the whole time. Right. <laughs> he's off being the good friend and uh, making faces. <laughs> <laughs> and coming to stark realizations that he's like almost a normal guy. <laughs> So, yeah, it was kind of weird uh, being uh, lacking Elias for an episode, but uh, I'm sure he'll be back. But the other thing is, uh, speaking of the St. George's, the thing we got at the at the very end there was uh, it looked like the uh, the sister is the next person getting sapped. Someone in black, the black glove, left hand at the very least. But yes, it does look like she was the one getting zapped so yeah because she immediately wakes up and then starts feeling sick like she's been drained yep so either she caught it or this is like the immediate reaction you know like she she noticed and whoever was ass assailing her had to peace out or uh she just woke up ha having you know felt like off you know i'm sure Anybody out there has woken up in the middle of the night sometimes and was like, oh man, I feel like crap. I'd rather go take a drink of water or something. So mm. we'll just have to see what that what's going on with that. Um, but yes, uh, we, we got a little hint. This person wears black and has a glove. <laughs> wow. That's a lot of information to go on. <laughs> so to be fair, I think that one teacher wears a glove. The, uh, the guy that was like very neutral to the situation of like, yeah, I don't really care what's going on. So uh, you never know. Uh, narcissist. Yeah. Him. That's just random <laughs> dartboard left field crap for me though. <laughs> I, I doubt we're supposed to try to actually imply who this is at all through that. It's just a typical, like, Oh no, we're obfuscating it. So you can't see the main thing here is just, it's another interesting target. So we've had Lucy so far, and then Simon, and then now uh, Jasmine, I'm pretty sure, was the name of the sister. think so. Pretty sure. Probably. Sure it, was, it was Jasmine and Violet, and I'm pretty sure Jasmine was the sister and Violet was the brother. Yeah. And they kind of had the cross dress aspect to him a bit, and that it was the sister who has the short hair and the brother who has the really long hair. Yep. But so we've got. So far, it's all been people associated with mages, basically. Yep. Lucy is uh, Chise's roommate. Simon is uh, now Elias's friend. And then we have now a St. George, which we know both the St. Georges are have uh, talent as mages, but right. they've just never 
been trained on. So that's something to look at going forward of uh, potential next targets uh, after her. Um, anybody associated with Elias, anybody associated with Chisei, anybody who has like latent possible um, mage like talent. Uh, so yeah, it, it'll be interesting if say like a pure alchemist is targeted uh, next because then that kind of like throws it in a different direction. But uh, if this is like the trend, then there's some stuff you can infer. So we need a little bit more information on that. But... No, if we're going to follow this trend, we know Rion's safe at least. Yeah, they're not going to go after him. He's good. <laughs> He's protected by a thin coat of rust. <laughs> Who would have thought that rust could ever protect somebody? But apparently this time, potentially. So... <laughs> What it can't protect is that freaking pen. So there you go. But uh, yeah, that's all I got. I'm enjoying it. It's looking good. So you got anything else, Age? Oh, I think I've talked it out at this point. It's oh. the last thing I could think of. So there you have it. Ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube, beyond have you watching. Appreciate you stopping by and hanging with us here in the dojo for more in the dojo. And this was The Ancient Magus Bride, Season 2, Episode 14. So have a good morning, evening, afternoon. Whatever it is for you. Have a good one. See you next time. Hey everyone, Victoria here. If you enjoyed the video, please consider pushing those like and subscribe buttons. Any and all support is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for your time, and we hope to see you again in the future.